Did God tell us when he made the dinosaurs? Of course not. There are no dinosaurs in the Bible. Well then, did God tell us when he made the fish? Ah, yes. He made the fish of the water and the fowl of the air, day five. Okay then. So did God tell us when he made the birds? What am I, a crazy person talking to myself? I just said the fowl of the air, day five. My bad. So then, did God tell us when he made the land animals? Ah, yes. The land animals God made on day six with man. And oi, did we make a mess of the place. Well, I just happen to have here an Apatosaurus. And I was wondering, in your professional opinion, would you say that he flies, he swims, or he walks on the land? Well, I'm seeing no flippers, I'm seeing no wings. I would say he walks on the land. So once again, let me ask you, did God tell us when he made the dinosaur? Aha! Aha! All right, so to start this off, I had an idea. I went to Google and I typed in dinosaurs for kids. And I went ahead and opened the first three websites that came up. Let's take a look and see what we got. So the first one, it says it's kidsdinos.com. And if you see right here, it says dinosaurs ruled the earth for hundreds of millions of years. Then suddenly they disappeared. Where did they go? What about the second one? The second page is Science Kids, Dinosaurs for Kids. Enjoy our Dinosaurs for Kids page and have fun learning about these mighty creatures that lived millions of years ago. And the third link on Google is Dinomite. It says, did you know that dinosaurs lived 65 million years ago? So what is the main thing that these top websites on Dinosaurs for Kids want us to learn first and foremost about dinosaurs? They lived a very long time ago. All right, well, let's transition now. Is the Bible really our source of truth in every matter? My pastor stood up time and time again and taught us about how it needs to be our first area of thinking. But do we really do that? You know, maybe when we have feeble, opinionated discussions or something with our friends or family. Sure, yeah, it's, it's easy then. What about when we read something online, a news article? Well, that, that should work too. But what about if we read it in a science textbook? Hmm. This is where it gets a little harder for some of us. We like to trust the authorities when we don't know as much in that area. That makes sense. But what if we have a higher authority? Let me give you an example. You know the word prehistoric? You know what that means? It means before recorded history. So prehistoric is the time before historical records. But what if we have a recorded history that goes all the way back to the beginning of creation? Is there such a thing as prehistoric anymore? Is the Bible really our source of truth in every matter? Let's think on that as we move forward. All right, dinosaurs. Awesome. Come on, who didn't love dinos as a kid? I still love them. They're fascinating. But today's talk is called Dinosaurs and the Bible. Well, the first thing you may be wondering is if the Bible even talks about dinosaurs. Well, a quick internet search will not going to show any results for the word dinosaur in the Bible. Case closed. No. The word dinosaur was invented by Dr. Richard Owen in 1841. The King James Bible was published in 1611, over 200 years earlier. Of course, the word dinosaur is not in the Bible. So, is there a word that is used in the King James? There is. The word dragon is used over 20 times in the Old Testament alone. Well, what's a dragon? A large reptilian beast. What's a dinosaur? A large reptilian beast. Wait, 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 Tim. Are you trying to say that dragons were real? Kinda. I think we have to get this modern day imagery of dragons out of our mind though. Today they're the things of legends that fly around and breathe fire. I think if you look deep enough, all legends are based in some truth. The Bible's obviously referencing something. Some large menacing reptilian monsters. So, what else do we know of that they could be? Dinosaurs seem to match the description best. Now take a look at this picture I took of a dinosaur at the Children's Museum in Indianapolis. 
Its official name is Dracorex Hogwartsia. That's right, after Harry Potter. Hogwartsia. It's because of its resemblance to a dragon. There are dragon legends all over the world in every culture. Coincidence? Or based in real history? Nehemiah 2.13 states, And I went out by night, by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem. Psalm 91.11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample underfoot. Jeremiah 51.37 And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons. And Malachi 1.3 says, I hated Esau and laid his mountain and his heritage for the dragons of the wilderness. Notice one thing very interesting in these passages. They're all mentioning real people, real places, and real things. These are not poetic or metaphoric. They're placed in real history. According to the Bible, dragons are real. So is this Bible really our source of truth in every matter? We've uncovered one more very important detail in understanding that dinosaurs are in the Bible. Did you catch it? dinosaurs lived among us at the same time. That's not something you'll read in any kids' dinosaur books or in your science textbooks. Now your faith's being tested. Now I'm not a fan of blind faith, so let me give some more reasons to believe. You know what that is? That's red blood cells and soft tissue. Do you know where it was found? in a T-Rex leg bone. Why is this incredible? Because we know that these elements do not survive more than 100,000 years. So, millions of years? I don't think so. Some of the soft tissue finds have been in dinosaurs that were supposedly 250 million years old, which is more likely that the soft tissue miraculously stayed around beyond what experiments prove or that dinosaurs have been around more recently than we thought. That leads us to this. How old is the earth? Is the Bible really our source of truth in every matter? If it is, then we know. According to the Bible, the world was created in six days, with man created on the sixth day. While we know that Adam lived 930 years, we also know how long most of the other main characters of the Bible lived. We have an extremely well-documented history laid out in the Bible. So-and-so begat so-and-so and so on. Blah, 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 blah. We know that it was about 2,000 years from creation to the flood, 2,000 years from the flood to Jesus, and it's been 2,000 years since Jesus. According to the Bible, our world is about 6,000 years old. But what about all the evidence that says it's much older? Again, I'm not for blind faith. Even though the Bible is enough, that response is not enough for those who might challenge our faith. Many, many people have walked away from their faith for lack of real answers to tough questions. This is one of those. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So why hasn't this changed everything? You see, when the science is settled, it's settled, and you don't question it. But why did they come to their conclusions? Well, see, here's the thing. They take the way things work today, the slow, gradual, constant rates of how things change today, and they extrapolate it out to all of history. See, they have no reason not to. See, they see slow, gradual process accumulating, and it makes logical sense to just say, well, it must take billions of years for this sort of thing to happen. And they're right if that's the only information they look at. You see, they see the Colorado River cutting the Grand Canyon very, very slowly, and they say it must be millions of years old. They see a little bit of water and a long period of time. Well, I see a lot of water and a little bit of time. Why not Noah's flood? So what are you saying, Tim? Well, what I'm saying is there are three biblical events that, if true, they disrupt their assumption of uniformity across all of history and make it how things could have happened more rapidly instead of gradually, rapidly, instead of uniformly,
catastrophically. Let's look at the three events. So the first thing, a rapid six-day creation. Instead of things forming slowly over millions of years, what if they all just popped into existence mid-life cycle? So let's take this example. Adam's created on day six. When he's created, he's probably a full-grown adult man. So he's probably what? Looks like he's in his 30s, maybe? So what would happen if you went and tried to figure out how old he was, but didn't know he was just created yesterday? You'd probably say he's, I don't know, he's 30, 40 something years old. But the truth is he's only one day old. Now apply that same concept to all of creation, the rocks, the trees, everything. It's gonna show the signs of age but really, in, in reality, be very young. Okay, so the good creation is the first one. What about the fall? What would that do to our, time, our timeline? Well, during the fall, a lot of things changed. You know, we have the pains in childbirth. We have the thorns and thistles. About the thorns and thistles, did you know that there are thorns in the fossil record? The fossil record was apparently made over millions of years before man even came on the scene. But the Bible says that thorns and thistles are a result of man's sin. Well, you can't have them before, and the Bible's saying they came after. It's one or the other. It's just something interesting to think about. The point is that the world changed following the original sin. So it would be a mistake to judge that part of our history by the way we see things working today. The last one is the flood. Um, we've talked about the flood before, and you, we've seen all the evidences. The plate tectonics, the volcanoes, the earthquakes, um, seismic activity, um, tsunamis, uh, polar ice caps, marine fossils on tops of mountains. Um, all the things that in this world changed very, very quickly over the course of that year-long flood that happened. Everything changed very, very rapidly versus slowly like they say the things happen so when you take that you take the creation the rapid creation which creates this kind of a built-in age to things and you take things changing after the fall and you take take how the world just was completely changed during the flood and you put all those together and you've got a good case for saying if we take the present as the key to the past we're gonna make a mistake but if we start from the Bible from the beginning and then look at the evidence in the world, we can see how, wait a second, these things are lining up. Perhaps the world isn't as old as they say it is. Three biblical events, the creation, the fall, and the flood, that if historically accurate, disrupt a purely gradual, constant rate of change that we observe today. You see, Christians who accept the Bible as the word of God and their authority in all matters have no reason to agree with the consensus on the age of the earth. But beyond the reasons to disagree with old earth conclusions, do we have evidence of a young earth outside the biblical account? Of course we do. Salt in the oceans. Did you know that each year more salt goes into the oceans than comes out of it? It's been studied and we know the ratio. The problem is, if the world is truly billions of years old, then the ocean should be salted salt. But if the earth is young, then the salt concentrate would be about what it is today. Did you also know that the moon is receding away from the earth a little bit more each year? Well, again, if the world was billions of years old, then just a million years ago, the moon would have been touching the earth. That's a problem. <laughs> there are tons of these examples I wish I had more time to go into. Well, let's get back to dinosaurs. The evidence and the scriptures are aligning. Dinosaurs have lived among us. But this raises many more questions. Those questions can all be addressed in what is called the seven Fs. All right, I'm gonna fly through these rather quickly, so hold on. The first F is formed. When were dinosaurs created? Well, the majority of what we think of as dinosaurs are land-dwelling animals. Those were created on day six of creation. Coincidentally, the same day we were made. There is no other place in scripture that allows for dinosaurs to be created any other time. Take a look at these footprints of dinosaurs and humans together. 
Bet you never seen those in science class before. The second F is fearless. Was there ever a time where dinosaurs were not the mean, nasty, feared beasts they are today? Of course. In the beginning, before the first sin, which was probably not long, the animals were all vegetarian. Genesis 1.30 says, And to the beasts of the earth, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. But they're so mean looking with the huge carnivorous teeth. Am I supposed to believe that those huge teeth ate leaves? Well, take a look at this. That's a hippo. A plant eater. How about this? That's a gorilla. Veggie eater. And this? A vegetarian species of piranhas. Big, sharp teeth does not equal meat eater. In the original creation, the lion could lay down with the lamb. And our hope is to be returned to that perfection. But it's not how it is now. The third F is fallen. The whole world changed following original sin. A door was opened through which things that were never intended to plague our world came flying in. We now all suffer, have pain, and eventually die. Carnivory begins. But Tim, how could we live in a world with dinosaurs? Uh, probably just the same way we live in a world with lions. We keep our distance. The fourth F is Flood. Did the dinosaurs survive the Flood? Well, more than likely they did. You see, Job chapter 40 and 41, which happened way after the Flood, both talk about great beasts that match the descriptions of dinosaurs and dragons. Take a look. Job 40, 15 to 19 says, Look at Behemoth, which I made along with you. What strength it has in its loin, what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God. Notice it says, which I made along with you. If this is the describing a mythical creature, well, then that makes us a mythical creature. Look at the rest of the description. Its tail sways like a cedar. It ranks first among the works of God. How's this look to you? Some Bible scholars like to call Behemoth an elephant. Well, let's examine that tail like a cedar. I don't think so. How about Job 41? Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down its tongue with a rope? If you lay a hand on it, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. I will not fail to speak of Leviathan's limbs, its strength, and its graceful form. Who dares open the door of its mouth, ringed about with fierce teeth? Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from its nostrils. And it goes on and on, the whole chapter. But is it possible that the fire-breathing part of Dragon Legends could also be based in some truth? Well, check this out. The Bombardier Beetle is an insect on which an enormous amount of research has been done. The trait that renders this insect so popular is that it owns a highly complex chemical weapon in its body measuring about two centimeters in length. When threatened by another bug, a boiling hot and irritant solution is formed in its body. Then the insect squirts this chemical substance at the enemy out of an aperture in its hind section. Driving away its enemies with this defense mechanism, the bombardier beetle is not even aware of what a miraculous job it does. This chemical weapon is the outcome of extremely complex chain reactions that occur within the body of the insect. The bombardier beetle shoots a fire-like smoking substance out as a defense mechanism. There are some who have thought that several dinosaur skulls seem to include chambers that can create similar results. The point is, the Bible makes mention of massive beasts after the flood. Many dragon legends all over the world go into the 14th century. You probably know Beowulf. How about Marco Polo? He said this, Here are found huge serpents, ten paces in length, two short legs, each with three claws. The jaws are wide enough to swallow a man, the teeth are large and sharp, and their whole appearance is so formidable that neither man nor any kind of animal can approach them without terror. Check out this picture. This is a picture of architecture of a Cambodian temple from the 1100s. I don't know about you, but that looks like a stegosaurus to me. Check this out. 
These are pictures of cave drawings in the western U.S. from hundreds of years ago before we classified dinosaurs. They sure seem to have seen something. Check this out. This is a picture of one of a collection of 30,000 clay figurines unearthed in Mexico, again found much earlier than the discovery of dinosaurs by scientists. So what did they see? There is much evidence that humans have seen and interacted with dinosaurs long before we dug them out of the ground. The fifth F is faded. You could also call this F forgotten. This is where we answer the age-old question, what happened to the dinosaurs? And leading up to this, I promise that the answer to that question would leave you speechless. Let's see if I can live up to the hype. Was it a meteor from space? Was it some poison gas? Was it aliens? What was it? Scientists have pondered over this question for hundreds of years. It seems like every year there's a different answer. Well, let's settle this once and for all. What happened to the dinosaurs? You ready? That's right. They died. Over a thousand species of animals go extinct each and every year. Why do we need a big, extravagant answer when the answer is staring us in the face? On top of that, many of the dragon legends around the world tell us stories about hunting them down. Perhaps we played a role in their extinction. We killed them off. They died. The sixth F is found. In the 1800s, scientists began unearthing the fossils of dinosaurs. This is the exact same time frame when these same scientists were starting to theorize about the age of the Earth and evolution. Dinosaurs fit their models perfectly. Or do they? Most museums push an evolutionary view of dinosaurs all over the place. I recently went to the Children's Museum in Indianapolis, and I was shocked to barely see any mention of millions of years or evolution. I had to seek it out to find it. That was awesome. On top of that, my son and I were looking at the dinosaurs, and I had to do a double take. I looked a little closer, and then I got his attention. I said, is that skin? There was this big patch around the rib cage. Even though even I don't believe dinosaurs live that long ago, I was still surprised to see what I thought I was seeing. Then we go around the corner, and there's this whole display called Leonardo, the mummified dinosaur. And there were tons of skin and scales still showing up. It was fascinating. I give the museum credit for not pushing agenda, but just presenting the evidence. The seventh and final F is fiction. This is the state most of us in the world lives in now regarding dinosaurs. Dinosaurs turned into birds, right? Well, the Bible says birds came on day five and land animals on day six, so tell me how does that work? Is the Bible really our source of truth in every matter? The summer of 2015, Hollywood released its next big blockbuster, the fourth part in the Jurassic Park series called Jurassic World. Take a look. We have a new attraction. What happened to the sibling? She ate it. She's killing for sport. Evacuate the island. True enough, just as other movies, this one will sure be chock full of references to millions of years in evolution. Will I still see it? Sure, it'll be fun. But as a Christian, I know that I need to reinterpret what I see in here. I need to filter everything through my only source of absolute truth, the Word of God. I also find it ironic that the draw to movies like this is to see humans and dinosaurs coexisting. Enjoy the movie, but remember that it is science fiction. So, to wrap this up, we need to talk for a couple minutes on why all this is important. Does it really matter if you believe dinosaurs existed millions of years ago, or if you believe our planet is billions of years old? I think it matters, but let me be clear that it's not an issue of salvation. In other words, you're not going to hell. In other words, you're not going to hell if you decide against everything I say today. 90% of what you hear in church is going to be about salvation, the gospel. But sometimes there's some of us who crave something more for our faith. Salvation is 100% necessary. It's foundational, and why it's such a major topic covered in church 
but some of us need more. Some of us know that even with our salvation, our faith's going to be questioned. We will have our doubts. And many of us are simply not prepared to answer those questions. That's why I do what I do, to build us up from what may be a blind faith to an informed faith. If you don't accept what I say today, you're no less my brother or sister in Christ. I may feel that your testimony is inconsistent and contradictory, but that's between you and the Lord. Everyone's at a different level and that's okay. I'm just here to challenge you to make your Bible more and more authoritative in your life. And this is one way in which you can do that. This book is trustworthy from the very first word to the last. That is part of my hope and my strength. It's rooted in faith, but also in reason. It's rooted in belief, but also in evidence. We've lost the amazing creatures that were the dinosaurs. I know my kids look forward to paradise being restored in heaven. Maybe they'll get to ride a dinosaur. I hope that happens. But listen to this. If someone is telling you that something in the Bible probably didn't happen that way because it's scientifically impossible, they may not be the best person to take spiritual advice from, seeing that they don't get the basic premise that with God, all things are possible. Thank you.